factorials. A factorial describes multiplying a sequence of descending natural numbers down to 1. The notation used is n factorial. n factorial is the product of consecutive descending natural numbers starting at n and ending at 1. n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on until you get to 3 times 2 times 1. While CAPS does not require the definition of a factorial, you are expected to apply the factorial calculations for exam purposes. For example, 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 6. 7 factorial equals 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 5,040. Example 1. Counting with and without repetition. Four-digit codes not beginning with zero are constructed from the digits 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 0 for a security lock. A. How many four-digit codes can be constructed if the repetition of digits is allowed? B. How many four-digit codes can be constructed if the repetition of the digits is not allowed? And C. Calculate the probability, correct to one decimal place, of randomly constructing a four-digit code which is divisible by five if the repetition of digits is allowed. Question A asks how many four-digit codes can be constructed if the repetition of the digits is allowed. We can use the digits 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 0 and the first digit cannot be 0. The first possible number could be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7 or 8. There are six possible digits to choose from. The second, third and fourth numbers could be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 or 0. There are seven possible digits to choose from. The number of four-digit codes that can be constructed if the repetition of digits is allowed and the first digit cannot be zero is six times seven times seven times seven, which is equal to 2,058. Question B asks how many four-digit codes can be constructed if repetition of the digits is not allowed. We can use the digits 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 0 and the first digit cannot be 0. The first number could be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7 or 8. There are six possible digits to choose from. This means that the second number could be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 or 0 minus the digit used for the first number. There are 7 minus 1 which gives 6 possible digits to choose from. The third number could be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 or 0 minus the digits used for the first and second number. There are 7 minus 2 which gives five possible digits to choose from. The fourth number could be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 or 0, minus the digits used for the first, second and third number. There are 7 minus 3, which gives four possible digits to choose from. The number of four-digit codes, if the repetition of digits is not allowed, is equal to 6 times 6 times 5 times 4, which equals 720. Question C asks how you calculate the probability, correct to one decimal place, of randomly constructing a four-digit code which is divisible by five if the repetition of the digits is allowed. First, calculate the number of possible four-digit codes. We can use the digits 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 0. The code is divisible by 5. 
This means that the only possible digit that can be used for the fourth number is zero. The first number cannot be zero, so the first number could be one, three, four, six, seven, or eight. There are six possible digits to choose from. The second and third numbers could be one, three, four, six, seven, eight, or zero. There are seven possible digits to choose from. The total number of four-digit codes divisible by five, if the repetition of digits is allowed, equals six times seven times seven times one, which equals 294. We now have to find the probability that one of these four-digit codes selected at random is divisible by five. The probability that the code is divided by 5 is equal to the number of codes divisible by 5 when repetition is allowed, divided by the number of possible codes when repetition is allowed. This gives a probability of 294 divided by 2058. This simplifies to 1 over 7 or 14,3%, correct to one decimal place. Example 2. Seating Arrangements Tulani High has a sports award ceremony. The school has a basketball team consisting of five players and a volleyball team consisting of six players. A. All the basketball players sit in a row at the ceremony. There are no restrictions on who sits in which position. In how many different ways can they be seated? B. It is then decided that the basketball captain must sit in the first seat of the row. The two vice captains have to be seated next to each other in any of the remaining seats. In how many different ways can the basketball players be seated now? And C. After the interval, the basketball team and the volleyball team sit in the same row at the ceremony. Calculate the probability that the basketball players will sit together and the volleyball players will sit together. Assume that seating positions are allocated randomly. Give your answer as a simplified fraction. Question A tells you that all the basketball players sit in a row in the ceremony. There are no restrictions on who sits in which position. You're asked in how many different ways they can be seated. The number of ways they can be seated can be written as 5 factorial, which is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 120. Question B tells you that it is then decided that the captain must sit in the first seat of the row and the two vice captains have to be seated next to each other in any of the remaining seats. You are asked in how many different ways the basketball players can be seated now. We can list the possibilities. Captain, vice captain, vice captain, player one, player two. Captain, Vice Captain, Vice Captain, Player 2, Player 1. Captain, Player 1, Vice Captain, Vice Captain, Player 2. Captain, Player 2, Vice Captain, Vice Captain, Player 1. Captain, Player 1, Player 2, Vice Captain, Vice Captain. Captain, Player 2, Player 1, Vice Captain, Vice Captain. The players can therefore be seated in six different ways. Question C says that after the interval, the basketball team and the volleyball team sit in the same row at the ceremony. You have to calculate the probability that the basketball players will sit together and the volleyball players will sit together. Assume that seating positions are allocated randomly. Give your answer as a simplified fraction. First, calculate the total possible seating arrangements, assuming there are no restrictions. The total number of possible arrangements equals 11 factorial. Now, calculate the number of ways of organizing the teams. Firstly, suppose the volleyball players sit on the left and the basketball players sit on the right. There are six factorial ways of organizing the volleyball players. 
There are five factorial ways of organizing the basketball players. Altogether, there are six factorial times five factorial ways of organizing the players. Secondly, suppose the basketball players sit on the left and the volleyball players sit on the right. There are five factorial ways of organizing the basketball players and there are six factorial ways of organizing the volleyball players. Altogether, there are five factorial times six factorial ways of organizing the players. The number of ways of organizing the players so that the teams sit together will be two times six factorial times five factorial. Finally, we calculate the probability. The probability that each team sits together is equal to the number of ways of organizing the teams divided by the total number of possible arrangements. This is equal to 2 times 6 factorial times 5 factorial all divided by 11 factorial. This equals the fraction 1 over 231.